So why are people not opting into your landing pages? Because I know it's fucking frustrating, right? You spend all the time creating the page, creating your funnel, trying to craft this really killer headline that is gonna suck in these leads who, who want to buy from you. But when you eventually get it all ready, you launch the funnel, your landing page is out there, you're driving traffic, and then no one bloody opts in. So not only is it really friggin' frustrating, but it's also costing your business a shitload of money. So let's say for example that your opt-in page is converting at 20%. Even a small tweak and a small increase that takes it from 20% to 25%. That 5% increase actually leads to 25% more leads coming into your business. And as a result of getting 25% more leads, then you're more likely to increase your sales by 25% as well. And a lot of the time when I'm looking at different landing pages, when I'm scrolling on Facebook and Instagram and I click the ad and I go through, there's one big mistake that I see most people making. But I guarantee if you fix this one mistake in your landing page, then it will generate you more leads and therefore more sales. So what I wanted to do was pull up a few examples and just run through the different problems on the screen right now. Now, I don't know this person. I don't know who this business is. It was just literally a landing page that I think I found through the Facebook ads library. But when I clicked on it, it was committing the same mistake that I see so many people do. You see, this is promoting a Amazon FBA offer. Now I'm gonna assume a few things about the business, but the way a lot of this copy is written and the way a lot of Amazon FBA coaches run their business is by marketing to beginners, marketing to people who are either new to business or maybe they've tried a few businesses and failed in the past. Basically, they are promoting a business opportunity. But what this guy is doing and what so many people do, especially when promoting a business opportunity, is they are giving too much information away. So the number one thing landing pages and opting pages should have is curiosity. It's the curiosity of wondering, hmm, I wonder what this new thing is that makes people opt in with their name and email address. If you don't have any curiosity in your landing page, then you're giving people no reason to actually opt in. So for this, for example, the promoting Amazon FBA, well, the problem with having Amazon FBA in your branding and then all over your headline, actually specifically mentioning the actual business model is that two things is gonna happen. Number one, people are gonna come to this page and they're gonna look at it and they're gonna think, hmm, he's gonna teach me how to do Amazon FBA. I've heard this a million times. I get targeted with ads just like this all the time. I see these people on YouTube and on Instagram saying how much they're making with Amazon FBA. Like this guy's a total stranger. If I'm gonna start an Amazon FBA business, I'm gonna do it with the people who I follow on YouTube and Instagram. And if I do opt in, I bet he's just gonna share the information that I've already heard before. So people are already gonna be like, hmm, I've already seen this info. I know what he's gonna talk about. I don't need to opt in. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is maybe a newer person who hasn't been as exposed to Amazon FBA before. They will come to the page and even if Amazon FBA is a relatively new topic for them and they're not sure what it is, because you're mentioning it all over the landing page, they're basically gonna say, hey, I don't need to opt into this. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna take Amazon FBA, I'm gonna Google it, I'm gonna YouTube it and I'm gonna figure out how to do it myself. And that's the biggest problem that a lot of people, especially promoting business opportunities do, is that they give the game away. They're teaching people how to make money with affiliate marketing and they're telling people they're gonna teach them how to build an affiliate marketing business. They're teaching people how to make money with e-commerce and Shopify and on their landing pages, they mention the word Shopify. And like I said, people are just gonna to come to this page and think, I've already heard of it before or I can Google it and try and do it myself. So you're giving them absolutely no reason to opt in. What you wanna do, especially if you're promoting to beginners and it's like a business make money opportunity, is yes, you wanna talk about the, the benefits, you wanna talk about the money that you've made, you wanna talk about how easy it is to set up, but you don't wanna tell them specifically what you do. And it's by not giving the game away, not telling them that you do Amazon FBA, or you do e-commerce with Shopify, or you do affiliate marketing, or you do YouTube automation. By not giving the game away, you are piquing their curiosity that they're gonna to say to themselves, hmm, even though I've kind of seen these types of promises before, I don't know what he's talking about and it's gonna really annoy me that I don't know what he's talking about. What if it is this great new opportunity? Therefore, they are going to opt in to find out more. So if you're doing this promoting to beginners or you're presenting someone like a new opportunity, whether that be to make money or lose weight or, or whatever it is, if you're promoting that new opportunity, 
then in your opt-in pages, you can't give away what you're actually going to teach. Now, here's a better example. So this guy, I believe he is promoting affiliate marketing, but just look at the copy that he uses on the page. So how we use the brand new silver lining method to make $10 a day, then systematically grow to 100 a day, then 1,000 a day and more. And okay, maybe you could improve the copy a little bit, but if you look at all the secrets as well, from reading the copy on the page, you have no clue what he's actually teaching. You can't come to this page and say, hmm, I've heard this before. And you certainly can't go to this page and think, all right, I'm just gonna Google and get more information myself. So if he's targeting the right people who are in pain and they are looking for a new way to make money, then the curiosity is gonna be very high once they land on this page and therefore they are going to opt in. Of course, different landing pages and different sales pages are different. But for opt-in pages, where the only goal of the opt-in page is to get their name and email address, the entire page just needs to be drenched in curiosity. And giving too much info like this guy is going to dramatically harm his conversion even the rest of the page, right? He's got like a video, he's got all of this information, he's got all these case studies and stuff. And I get it, it's social proof. But again, you've got to look at it from the mind of the potential customer. If they're seeing this guy from an ad, they're probably busy. They're probably in line at Starbucks. They're probably maybe in a lecture theater. They might even be on the phone whilst they're driving or they might be on public transport. It's very unlikely that the person who's coming to this page is going to have five to 10 minutes spur to go ahead and read all of the copy on the page, read all the testimonials, go and watch the video. And what happens is, is when you're targeting to like a cold audience who has never heard of you before, and they come to an opt-in page like this, and they see all of this info, instead of going, oh my God, this looks great, I'm gonna opt-in, what they think is, hmm, that's a lot of information to read. I don't wanna opt-in before I read it because it might not be right for me. So I know I'll come back later when I have more time, I'll read through the page properly and I'll opt in then. And guess what? They never come back, they can't find the page and you've just lost a customer. So as another general rule with opt-in pages, less is more. The best opt-in pages that we've had have followed a very similar structure to this, where it's like headline and CTA button. Maybe you wanna do the free bullets. But for opt-in pages, again, to a cold audience who literally spend about two seconds deciding whether they're actually going to opt in or not, having videos and a shitload of information, that is not the way to do it. So opt-in pages to a cold audience, super curiosity-based headline and very clear CTA, less information is more. Now, as a general rule, when you're marketing to more sophisticated buyers, so let's say you're marketing to already established business owners, and you're helping them scale from you know 50K a month to 100K a month, then you can definitely be more specific with what you're teaching. And this guy, for example, he could say, oh, I'm targeting already established Amazon FBA businesses. And that's fine. So in that case, maybe you can have Amazon FBA in the title, but that isn't in alignment with the rest of the copy on the page. Because here it's like how to find products, you know, blah, blah, blah. A lot of this stuff is very like beginner, biz -oppy, hey, come and make money with us, like free Amazon FBA play sheets, right? A lot of this is targeting beginners. Now, if you're targeting already established Amazon FBA businesses, then if they're already doing, I don't know, like 100K a month from Amazon FBA, then they probably already know how to find products. So like the rest of the copy just isn't in alignment. If you're already targeting a sophisticated buyer in the Amazon space, then okay, have the headline, that's fine. But then the bullets need to totally redo to be more tailored and specific to that type of customer. So honestly, that's the, the biggest lesson I've learned because I've done a gazillion different split tests over the years. I've tested every type of opt-in page. I've tried every different type of video, social proof, about me sections, like long form informational copy. I've even made the opt-in page into like a mini long form sales page. And every single time, literally every single time, the shorter the opt-in, the higher the conversions. And I know you can play around with it and be like, oh, well, you know, a longer opt-in page has a more qualified lead, so I'd rather pay a little bit more and I'd rather have the conversions a little bit less to get that more qualified person. And that's fine, it's a good theory, but again, is that actually happening? Are you tracking the leads who are coming from a short opt-in page versus a long one? And are you tracking the buyer journey? Because in theory, it makes sense, right? Yes, you would get more qualified people. But again, when we have actually tracked this across our client base, very rarely have we just seen like an astounding difference between the lead quality of short form versus long form opt-in pages. 
And usually it is a net positive to go with the short form because even if it's a slightly lower conversion into a customer, the amount of volume and extra volume that we get from that short opt-in page usually offsets that small percentage difference.